So we're going a slightly different direction with this video. It's not the standard car related video because we just bought a house and we're moving. So the yard looks like crap here. The guy never took care of it right. And um, well, it's like all weeds and clovers and dandelions. So we're gonna put this together and uh, see how it compares to the uh, Agrifab, which I believe it's the exact same one, but significantly cheaper. Um, the Agrifab one has really bad, um, really bad reviews on the assembly and the quality. If it's the same one, it's probably just as bad assembly and just as bad of quality. But, you know, I have a welder. We can make it work if uh, there's anything that uh, isn't so good on it. All right, cracking open the box here. These pipes just floating around, banging each other. Uh, there's the instructions. The bag's ripped open. Hopefully we aren't missing a bunch of stuff. Little bar. And here's the spreader. Another bar just floating around in there. Oh, the tines are coming out the side there for the aerator part. But uh, it's a plastic tub. All right, well, let me uh, get this thing set up on the floor and take it out and we'll check it out. Okay, so why get this one instead of seeing the other ones? The Agrifab is like 250 bucks. This one was 170. Um, and the thing I wanted was a drop spreader for one because it's got better control and stuff and I can tow it behind my CO turn. Um, the Brinley, the, the, so Brinley makes one of these too and there's a bunch of other companies that make them. Like the Brinley for 300 and some dollars, I figured it'd be higher quality, but it doesn't even have this bar in it for like moving your, your uh, product. And on top of it, the videos I've seen, if you watch them, this is the gate that closes your seed off or your product off. It closes completely on this. The one on the Brindley video, I saw some guy pulling it. He pours the seed in this thing, and as he's starting to go down his driveway, it's just piss and seed out the one side of it. So I'm like, you know, that's just crazy. I'm not going to pay 300 and some crazy dollars for the Brindley when this thing, you know, it'll do it just as good. You know, and it's, like I said, 170 bucks, and it does aeration and seeding. You know, if you just needed to spike or area, you just throw maybe throw a couple bricks in here or something like that, or just close this off. But uh, let's check out the instructions and see what they look like. Okay, here's the instructions for this one. It, now, if you have an Agrifab, maybe, and the instructions are really that bad, I haven't seen them. Maybe you should check out the instructions for this one because I believe they're the same identical units. But this has got some much nicer looking put together instructions. Um. I don't really see any oddball, poorly converted Chinglish. But uh, now let's start putting it together and we'll see what we got. All right, all the parts are laid out. Oh, and uh, yeah, this is the other reason I'm not too excited. The only downfall of this house, it's got space for my family and everything else but this garage floor is a shit show so no pardon the stuff in the back it's all we're moving in stuff still but um if anybody knows how to fix that or has some tips i'd love to hear them because this yeah you can't you can't work on this it's better than the gravel driveway i had before but still sucks so uh let's hop on the first step and we'll uh go from there uh i i guess what i'll do is like uh, put the thing together first and then talk about the steps. So if you have a Brindley or one of these you can follow I'm not a Brindley. Excuse me. If you have the um, Agrifab You can follow along and if you have this you can follow along and make sure you know you're putting it together, right? Step one 516 bolts lock washers washers. We're gonna assemble the side of this container to the hitch tube. Oh and uh these two little plugs that go on the end all right that's the first step all right there we go we got this these hitch tubes installed uh, one thing i learned a long time ago is never crank everything down tight all these hardware just kind of snug so there's a little bit of movement uh, these are 
shape differently. Just the flat piece right here goes in the front because that's where your, I think your selector is going to go. Or your thing that lifts them down the bikes or something. I'm not sure. We'll find out. But that's how this goes. A little overhang at the back. We'll go step next step. Step where you're making the handle lift bracket. Um, you need the bar, the bracket support, the little handle, and the 5 16 by 3 quarter. You only have one of those. So that's the right size one to use. And we'll be putting it together on the inside here. And then that'll help lift the wheels or lower the wheels. All right, there she is all assembled. Again, I didn't make this super tight. It's kind of snug because it's got to connect to another piece and you got to get the spacing right. And we'll go on to the next part. Here's the stuff you need for the next step. We got another one of these long ones. That's part of the seven you get, or this part of the seven you get. This is, oh, there's two of these really long ones for the back. Spacer and a lock nut, two washers and another lock nut. You should have two of these spacers. It'll be, the other one will be used on the other side. So you're gonna run it through this bar, basically, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, pivot point with the little spacer is gonna go through this bar here on this. And then this is gonna be, they're both gonna connect to that handle we just put together. And that's gonna, the handle's gonna be on here, the pivot point's here, and that's gonna raise and lower the wheels. So we'll put that together on the back and go from there. All right, this is all assembled on the back here, that back of the tube, spacer, little couple washers here. Now I, now you can, I tighten these down, tighten the gruff. And then this one is snug because it's a pivot right here. So I didn't want to tighten it down yet. And then uh, I'm assuming the other side is where we're gonna go next. We'll get the parts together for that and go over there. Yeah, as we say, the other side's the same. Long bolt, spacer, nut slides to the back of here. Um, it's loose because it says do not tighten yet in the instructions. So we'll see what goes from there because that's a lot of gap and it really doesn't move over that, you know, that's it. This is, you know, it's snug on the other side because it said to snug it. So we'll see. What's next? All right, next step is pushing, putting this hitch piece together and squeezing it together with these three bolts and nuts, which is why I did not tighten those sides yet because then it'll let me square this up so that it's level across there when we tighten everything down. Because if I had cranked the sides down, this would have been all cattywampus and could have been like, you know, like this or like this or whatever. So let's do that next. Okay, those bolts are in now. Uh, do not tighten them up yet because it says so in the instructions. But also because the next step is putting the actual hitch plates in, which will be these guys. The uh, last two uh, 5 16 nuts that are nylocks and a little hitch pin guy and the uh, cotter pin. So those are just gonna go right down through this little slot right here is where those two bolts go and then the one comes out front where your pin. Okay, let's throw that on next. Little tip, this big bolt comes in the kit. Use that to help you square up these so they're not crooked because that little pin is so small that if you use this guy, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more, you know, they could be a little off, see, and it still looks flat. So use the big one. Then tug, snug these down till they're just a little bit of grip on them. And then you could tighten these a little bit and then till these are more snug and then just kind of alternate back and forth till everything's tight. All right, this is all tight now. Again, we snug these up till they were just riding on these pipes. So we tighten these pipes down pretty snug so that we can make sure these are forward and backwards in the little divot that they give you and once they're because you don't want to pinch it too far forward because then it'll come apart and it'll be slapped so we just snug these up shook these back and forth snug them up some more shook them back and forth till they didn't have any more forward and backward movement then we tighten those down then we crank these down and everything was good now it's on to the uh, next step oh yeah you can see this we just threw this in here too next step i think is the wheels all right the wheels are next i got both ready because we'll need it that's we use a huge bolt we had before the two washers, a hex nut, that's our, excuse me, a jam nut, and the nylock nut. You want to make sure you get those right because you don't want to, you know, it's going to help you snug up the wheel in here without being too tight and then it'll just lock it in place. Anybody else with me on the fact that the washers have a front and a back side? I always, you know, the nice smooth side versus the sharp side where they, that's left over from when they punched it. You know, I always put it, you know, the nice side out. 
unless they're rubbing against something. Then I put the smooth sides together and the sharp side on the outside because then they seem to ride together better. So in this case, I'll probably put this one backwards per se, if you want to call it backwards, so that the smooth side rides on this wheel. Well, let's get those together anyway. All right, you can see we got one side done, but I'm going to make a mention of what kind of sucks about this and it may cause wear, you know, if you're carrying heavy loads in this, eventually it's going to trash these. Is This is threaded the whole length. So when we put this through here, this plastic is riding on threads. So with that weight on there, it's like a edge of a drill slowly tearing away at the, the side that's got the weight on it. You know, there's no bushing or nothing in here at all, and there's not one in the kit. You know, if you really wanted this to last a while, you know, what you would do is you can go get, you know, a replacement half-inch bolt that has, you know, flat piece here. And then, you know, that's at least as wide as this wheel is, you know, a flat section. And then even if it's because it'll probably be a really long one because of the amount of flat it'd have to be and just cut it off. Because this is going to, you know, that much weight on here is going to slowly you know grind away at this because the wheel turns and the heck the bolt stays stiff you know it doesn't move because we got it pinched in between the frame tubes so that's the only thing i've seen so far that's kind of uh eh, you know could have been better or if you get a smaller bolt and put bushings on both pieces you know that would work too well she's now up on our wheels again when you you know when you go to tighten this down just snug this nut against the wheel so there's a little bit of there's a little bit of you know drag and then stick it through there and crank this nut down and holding the outside and you'll be able to crank that as tight as you want with and you know, this won't move you know as long as you keep the other bolt steady and then it'll keep that same tension you put on it all right this is next this is a flow control handle the little flow control handle condom three little nylock nuts and then this piece which is the connector that goes to your flow control we'll put those together these just go together as one here and then they go on the machine okay we got this handle flow control handle together you can see this goes on the outside handle facing out on the same side the handle points out is this piece here so snug this nylock up and this ferrule up so that it's got a little bit of you know make it tighter than you think and then spin this thing around a bunch you know to wear in that paint and stuff and then you'll know because if you do it and just barely loose enough and you spin it around it'll get really wobbly because it'll wear the paint away we're gonna put some ready grease in there anyway same thing for this piece don't make them too tight um to help you put these nuts on just get yourself like a seven millimeter socket and stick there stick that in there and then you can use it like as a handle to help tighten these all on there and snug this piece up or whatever without it getting too crazy uh, next we need these l bracket pieces this is a gonna go inside and mount this to the hopper um, when we do it you're gonna have the l brackets can go through that hole there's gonna be a washer between this bracket and the hopper and then the bowl will be in there and then you know not in the inside and in the back of the hopper so this washer will be on the outside so we'll throw it together and show you what it looks like all right that bracket's in this is in here and that's snug i think i found the only thing i don't like about this but i mean it is cheap is the fact that this just goes through plastic so when you move this handle you know you're flexing that whole plastic assembly and this rotation so far what it seems like the tightness of stopping this handle from you know moving anywhere i think there's a a lock bracket i hope so like to hold this in place because otherwise the tightness of this is what stops this from opening and closing on its own opening and closing your your seed piece but we'll see hopefully there's a little something to hold it but um oh there is ha huh, yeah it's open my mouth next step look at that well i guess we'll throw that together yeah, this, this could use another washer, but it doesn't say use one because when you tighten this down, it wants to slide past the inside of this instead of grabbing onto it if they were squeezed together. You know, like this would be squeezed together and now it rides the little pieces right on that. But it only says to use one nylock washer on the top if, you know, and it's a carriage bolt too. 
So, you know, when you're tightening this down, you might want to squeeze this together so it actually pinches the plastic on both sides. Or uh, maybe, you know, get some kind of washer to help pinch that. We'll see how it works, though, down the road. All right, the next, the next part is to put this through here. You gotta push this all the way to the closed position and this all the way so it's in the off position. And then you're gonna move this out so that it goes right in here. So basically this is as far off as it'll go and that's off. However, this in my, it, this bracket isn't really bent at a perfect angle. So you gotta pull this piece out to get this to go in here and then you secure it with a little pin. But you gotta pull this out to get that to go in here so it's kind of that kind of sucks a little bit but i mean once you do you can snug this down because it can say snug it down because it doesn't rotate this way so you can snug this down and it'll keep it there but i, I kind of you know wish this was you could probably bend it in a vice a little bit and make it so it's less of a strain on this but we'll go from here and see how it works oh and the next uh, i think we're putting tines on next I'm sorry for the lack of light. It got a little dark out because I realized that as we were losing daylight quickly, I had to mow my yard so I could put this stuff down in the morning when it was still dewy. Um, the next step is uh, pushing these little flange bushings in all the stars and both sides of this guy. Now the one side's pretty loose. The other side, I had to smack it in. And then you push them also into the outsides of this. Just like so. Uh, when you put them in for these, they go in. See, there's a. They go on the side. This goes on the side that's like indented here. And then we're going to push the drive shaft with this coupling, this washer spacer on there that goes through here, through that center axle. And then we have to take and put the drive hub spacer and stuff on it. So let me get this all lined up and I'll show you. There we go. That's uh, a shaft pushed through there with this large washer, this really sloppy bushing, and then the drive facing the wrong way. Yeah, put, put this on the right way. Come on, let's, let's fix this. Sorry about that, I was in a hurry to get this all together right there, but it goes on that way there you go there you go and then we gotta put um i believe another thing in another star and then like it's a washer spring star combo so i'll show you what uh, what's next all right we got this guy on here now it's, it says to put these two on this way according to the manual maybe that's because this fits on the like it's up in there on the metal instead of pushing on the plastic I'm not sure but that's the way the manual says all right now we got to put two more on so we'll throw it gets this guy then this compression spring then another washer and then from here we do another set of discs just like this one then a plastic tube, then another set of double discs with a tube in the middle. Um, let's see if I can, all right, I'm gonna have to, we'll put it on there, I gotta move this thing. All right, basically this became a, it's a pattern, you know, after the spring it's a disc, plastic tube, disc, plastic tube to separate them. You know, another set, another set, another set, another set, till you get to the end. Then it's the short plastic tube and then a washer on the outside and that washer is there because this washer pushes on the frame itself instead of the little bushing because otherwise without this washer and you just had this tube would pop that little bushing out so this pushes on the frame and keeps it in place same same thing on the other side is what the washers are for all right and now that we got that done it is just a washer on the end and a pin i think let's see let's check be right back. Yep, it is. Just the washer on the outside and the cotter pin. All right, now we're going to move on to the drive side and uh, we'll tackle the, the drive setup. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot to mention this one. This cotter pin goes in here. It actually ties to the shaft. That's the drive cotter pin. Um, I mean, it's a sh probably it's a sheer 
you know, which you don't want to, you could replace it with a different bolt or something, but here's the issue is if you happen to bind something up a clump in that and you, sh you know, you don't want to, this is not the most sturdy, hardcore piece of equipment, you know, wouldn't want to break anything. So, you know, if you're going to replace this with something, you know, make sure it's not a grade eight bolt. Okay, for the drive chain, obviously it goes around here. Uh, if you've never done a master link before, you just basically slide this guy over. Um, he will allow you to remove this trapped link right here by pulling it out the back. So uh, I need to find something sharp and pointy to get back here and knock this over. Uh, they become rocket ships, so don't lose it when you pop it loose. So there's our master link. We will then put this key in and uh, the, let's see if I can get this on with one hand. Probably not. Oh my gosh, probably. So, so that plate just goes on there like that and that's what holds the chain together. And then you push your little clip guy. Wow, sorry for the... Uh, there we go. We put it over top of here. Lock it in. <clears throat> you don't have to uh, push the whole thing over it. It's gen These generally have like a slot in to where you can set it on like that to line up this one and then you just shove it from behind over this other one. Ta-da! Master Link installed. So now you have oh, the drain or the, the drive set up locked in. And uh, so this is apparent. Oh, why is it? Why is this thing interesting? It was wanting to jump the chain down there. See that? When we go the correct way, it wants to jump it. Oh, see? That was weird. Why did it do that? I bet, you know, sprocket's bent, I bet, right here, probably from shipping, right here, because that's, that's the tooth that wants to jump, see? See, it goes off. Uh, well, let's see if we can fix that. If not, that'll be interesting. That sucks. I mean, it's definitely, you know, that's a problem with this thing flying around in a box when it's shipped. It's, you know, so far that's the only issue I've had, really. Okay, this definitely did get bent in shipping. So what I did was I held uh, my finger here pinned against this frame piece because you can get it in there sturdy without it turning. And then you spin the uh, gear assembly, which I, I really can't do with... Let's see, hold on. I don't think I can do this with one hand. Anyways, yeah, I can't. So you gotta, you hold your finger here, then you spin the drive spike like this, and you'll see it like, you know, it'll move in and out, this, this tooth well. And there was like a section of about six here where it must have hit something and bent it. You know, I mean, you could definitely, you could actually see it. I don't know. Maybe I'll, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's significantly better now. You could actually see it before. But if this keeps popping off on you, that's something to check. You know, if your chain pops a lot, just take a peek at that, you know, stick your finger in there and run it around, or if you're, you know, handy you have a dial indicator stick that puppy on there you know on the outside even with them you know and spin that and read it you'll see it's definitely bent so i think that's it now i mean this is all together and we'll take a peek at it see what she's like oh nope wait almost forgot the ever important safety third this uh cover which just has two of those self thread forming screws and that would be it I forgot to mention too, like this, there's a lot of gap here and you have to pull this over significantly hard to close this up. 
So I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, maybe it's the way this is bent a little bit off or, you know, I mean, that other side is, is tight, you know, because you need the handle to lock in place. So I'm just gonna, I don't, I don't know. See, you don't want it to be sloppy like this, but I feel I don't want to pull it too tight. So what I might do is snug this up just a bit so that it closes this gap. And then if I have any chain problems or any issues, then I'll loosen it up and report back. Okay, my overall first impressions are that it's actually pretty good for a good chunk of money cheaper than what seems to be its cousin, the Agrifab one. Um, again, the only little things is the tires, you know, the threads that pass through the wheel um, that may chew on them a little bit after a while. I don't know. I mean, I have some molybdenum disulfide. Maybe I'll toss it in there and see if that helps make it last. Um, the only other thing is this center, so this drive was installed already. Um, and it's, I mean, it was a little snug before when you would turn the, um, when you turn the drive gear here, this was a little, like, it's just a little snug. I mean, it's, it definitely, the dirt, you know, cutting through the ground will be able to turn it. But, um, it's just a little snug. I did spray some, um, ready grease, which is a grease that's thinned down. So, uh, it's ready grease. It's thinned down. So it, you spray it and it gets anywhere. It can get in a little cracks and cracks and creep. And then once the solvent dries up, it's grease. So I sprayed some in here. Um, and, if, and on both sides, and it seemed to help a little bit, but really, I mean, it's probably in this, you know, inside here, whatever it's like this bushing or bearing underneath this little ring or something, you know, I don't, you might have to take it apart, but I believe it's, yeah, I think it's riveted. So, you know, but otherwise, I mean, it seems really nice. It doesn't seem too, too janky or too um too weak um we'll find out um tomorrow um i have to spread some uh weed and feed and kill like pretty much my entire lawn which is mostly dandelions and crabgrass and uh clover